All right, y'all, this is Monday to Monday podcast, and I've got my boy here, Michael J. Ringer. Michael, brother, how are you doing today? Doing good, man, doing good. A little bit tired, went to sleep at five, woke up at fucking, I think, three in the afternoon. So I missed church this morning, not too too happy about that. But it is what it is. I need I needed some sleep, I had some problems to deal with, but it's all good, man, it's all good. Sunday, <laughs> feeling feeling good. It's going to be a nice chilled out, chilled out evening. I got get to speak to you as well on a Sunday, which is always a kill. Hell yeah. And where are you located again? I'm in Spain at the minute, but I can, I, it's like, you know, we were just talking about a few things about like people moving to different countries, people just being with, it's like, I don't, I don't get why people who are unhappy where they live, they just stay there like forever. It's, it's like, bro, you're not a tree, right? You're not a tree. Yeah. You're, you're not rooted down to some country that you hate. Like you could just go, go somewhere for a few months, go somewhere else. But that's, you know, then again, it's like the dude who travel too much. That's also a weird red flag as well. It's like, what? Yeah, that, that is a little weird. I'm, I'm someone, so I was born and raised in the Bay area out in Northern California and I love it. You know, it living there growing up there has made me who I am, you know, and I'm pretty proud of that, but I always try to find a way to leave. I, I went to New York for a little bit. Um, uh, I went to LA for a little bit. Now I'm in South America. I'm actually in Colombia right now. Uh, but dude, to what you were saying, and we were just having this conversation before we started recording. Um, yeah, there's there's like a group of people that are on the internet and they're traveling all over. They're going to these like countries where you know their euros or their dollars go a lot further, and they're just totally LARPing. They're talking about you know oh the women and and it's like bro, I'm here. I'm seeing them. I'm seeing them with my two eyes. And what they're talking about online, it's not really what they're doing or not not what they're really living. At least not 99% of them. It's weird though too, man. You get all of these fucking... It's like, I, I keep on talking about this on Twitter, right? I'm just like, there's just all of these weirdo accounts. And that whole thing is just like, yeah, bro, look at this chick. This chick's hot than, than these Americans. It's like, bro, do you not do anything? Like, it is all that you do, sit online, zooming in on pictures, being Hello? like... Oh, yeah, this one's got a real nice ass. It's like, bro, what the fuck, bro? What are you doing with your life? That you can just sit there and just post pictures. Hey, brother, you there? Uh, it got stuck on my side. You good? Ah, uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm good on my uh, Okay. Side. Okay. Yeah, so uh, the last thing I heard was uh, you were talking about this on Twitter. Yeah, these weirdos. These absolute weirdo geeks who just sit there zooming in on on pictures of, of women and being like, yeah, I'm so masculine. And then it's just like the pose. All that they do is just take random uh, videos and screenshots of women. And then they just sit there just like analyzing the photo. It's like, what what's wrong with you? bro? <laughs> like, yeah, tell me that you watch too much porn without telling me that you watch too much porn. Bro, like, porn brain is a porn brain is a fucking it's it's a disease for sure for sure and and for those watching those for those watching who don't know who michael ringer is i like we were cool because we were part of this group together right and uh but i got really cool with this guy because i saw he was exposing people on twitter like 24 7 i can't keep track of how many people you exposed dude it's well, hilarious it's do you know what? i've actually given up on it though because the thing is that really pisses me off about the whole situation. Everyone already knows that these guys are like scammers and scam artists. Everyone already knows. And, but it's it's weird because the whole thing, like especially online, right? The whole thing is it's like this weird cult, like, like everyone wants to be the guy that everyone's following and everyone yeah. wants to be the guy that everyone... It's like, bro, why do you want that much like attention? Like I'm, I'm quite chill. I'm quite happy right now. Like they banned me for saying the dumbest thing ever. Like I got, bro, I was at like 10k, and um, they banned me because I saw this video of this woman throwing her ex's ashes into uh, a river, and I just commented on the video, and I'm like, yeah, someone should probably sh throw her in. I got banned for it straight away, and everyone keeps what? Just, yeah, bro, everyone's just like. Twitter's free speech. It's going to change the world. We're, we can say whatever we want. You say something about throwing a woman into a river because she's uh, throwing her ex's mom's ashes. And you get yeah, that's pretty it's fucked up. That's pretty fucked yeah. up. And it's kind of crazy because, yeah, it's kind of crazy because I've literally seen videos of, like, murder on Twitter, bro. And there's porn all over it, too. 
It's weird, man. Twitter, like, I don't like Twitter too much because it's just a cesspool of just weirdos for the most part. Like, yeah. there's some really good accounts. Like, the, the guys that I really, really like um, are, like, the Christian accounts there. Um, shout maybe, them out. Shout them out. Yeah, well, oh, man, we've obviously got Mr. Sovereign Bra, my brother uh, Eli as well. Uh, Michael, I always forget his, his second name, not me. I mean, obviously, I'm cool to follow, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Michael's another guy. Uh, another Michael. There's so many. There's so many. If you guys just look on my profile, I'm, I'm sure that I would have retweeted something, something of them. And you, you know, it's it's just like anything. It's like an echo chamber, but Twitter's like money Twitter. That's what they call it. I always forget what they call it. Money Twitter is cancerous, man. Dude, it's a it's weird place. Crazy. It's a weird place because money Twitter is like a like a convergence of all these different little Twitter roads, right? So you've got yeah. you know like the like the uh, Andrew Tate wannabes. You've got them coming into there. You've got the um, the traveler people. Like for me spe specifically, I'm thinking about like the Latam guys, right? So the guys who travel Latin America and they talk about it, but they're always and on accounts. Like that's the one thing I noticed. They're and on accounts one. And then, like, I'm again. I'm here. I'm in. I'm in Medellin, right? And I, you know, I'm. Tra I'm by myself. I'm walking around, traveling, doing my thing, chilling. And then I see. I see these guys. I see, and, I'm, and I can talk to the Colombians. That they think I'm one of them. But then I could also talk to the Americans and the Europeans and stuff. And uh, some of them are cool. I'm not saying like it's like. But I just noticed where I'm like, oh, the guys that are online on the Anon accounts, bro, they're totally larping. Like most mm -hmm. of what they're saying is bullshit. Yeah, it's like this. There is one. If you are in Latam, there is one very, 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 very good man to follow. Uh, it's Lawrence King. He's an absolute badass. Love that guy. He's properly legit. Oh, I but, think I follow him. Yeah, he he's great, man. He's he's a real good dude. Um, spoken to him plenty of times. Super, super good dude. Um, he's also a sales trainer as well. Great at what he does. Great at what he does, man. Love that guy. But there's it's like it's it's strange to me, man, because. It's like I I understand why some people want to be anon, and that's cool, you know. But what I don't get is why are you sitting there talking about masculinity and shit when all that you do is is go on TikTok, find videos of like cat mom women, and then post them up and be like, hey, hey, "Look, guys, cat mom woman." Whoop, whoop. It's like why? Like it's yeah. not. It's weird. Why are you celebrating that? Like, he's actually really sad. Like, fine, all right, she's a, a weirdo feminist, whatever, but it's sad, you know? She's going to die it, alone. <laughs> like, that's sad. Right? That is, actually, that is the truth, dude. It, it's, it really is sad. And one thing that I noticed, because there was a time where I was, uh, I don't know what word to put it, but, like, there was a point in time where, for me, like, I would get triggered by stuff like that. And I would repost it or comment on it or be like, oh, you know, the transgenders or the liberals or whatever, right? And one thing that I noticed over time, I was like, hey, they, they kind of got me, right? Because now I'm in this cycle of like, I see the content, I react to it. And now I'm carrying that shit emotionally in the real world. Now, you know, I already posted, already commented, retweeted, whatever. Uh, but not only that, once I realized that and I was like, you know what, I'm not going to engage it anymore. I started noticing that the people who do engage and then they repost it. And it's like, why are you reposting this if you're against this? You should just not give it no attention. Don't give it no more you know, don't put it in front of more people's eyes. Like, even if you have something to say about it, like, oh, look at these people or whatever. And um, honestly, I went through like a blocking spree of like people who do that continuously. And I was like, dude, I don't want to see that. Like, you're so against it. You have so much negative things to say about this, but like, you're so focused on it. So you're like bringing more of it to people's attention. It's, it's weird, man. See, I, um, I, I had this thing maybe like six months ago. I think it was like back in August just before my birthday. And I said to myself, um, I'm, I'm not even going to comment. I'm not even going to share any of like, cause as annoying as, as people like sneak off and all like whatever that other just weirdo, all of these streamers, cancer, like absolute can plague of planet earth. Worse than the black plague, black pa plague plus COVID on steroids. Weirdos. But I was just like, you know what? I'm not even gonna like. In, in, instead of me going and and be like, yeah, fuck these guys, whatever. It's just, it's like, it's just pathetic. It's just pathetic because a lot of these people they use, um, 
what's it called? Bait, right? That's what they call it. The the, right. the bait. And then people people that take it and then they 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 it's just fuck them, man. I, I, I don't care. I don't care. Anyone can do whatever they want at the end of the day. They answer to God. I I do too. So it's like it's it's also very strange to me how people people enjoy being depressed now. Like people enjoy being depressed. People enjoy being unhappy. People enjoy being yeah. angry. People enjoy being miserable. Yes. And it's it's, it's like, like their baseline. Yeah, it's like how can you live like that, man? It's it's you you gotta have some fun in life. Like that's that's the thing. If you're gonna live, you may as well have some fun, right? Hundred like, percent. It's it's like all of these red pill geeks. <laughs> well, yeah, bro, you gotta be stoic, bro. If you're not if you're not stoic, emotionless rock, then no woman's ever gonna it, shut the fuck bro, up. Bro, oh my god, that's, and you know. I feel you on that, right? And it's like, there are, I'll give it to you. There are some personalities out there that are just naturally like that, you know? But that's like a small percentage of the population. Everyone's a little bit different. Everyone's got their makeups or whatever. You know, like me, I can't ever do that, bro. Like, that's just, I enjoy talking to people. I enjoy laughing. I like to go out and dance and stuff like that. And that's just me. And, um, you know, the, the interview I had before you uh, was uh, this guy. He was, I know you're familiar with GG3, right? The the numerology, yeah, numerology people. Yeah. Yeah. And so, oh, uh, you introduced me to the prophet. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, good guy, man. I love that dude. Bro, crazy full circle moment. You introduced me to the prophet and then me and him just started talking and we got kind of cool. And then he introduced me to uh, Catwise, who I interviewed. Uh, so kind of a, a cool little full circle moment here. Um, but I love that. Yeah. Yeah, it's all love, right? But when I did that interview and, you know, I had a lot of questions and he was telling me about like, yeah, these are these are like personality makeups and like yours is this way. And I didn't tell him, who, you know, I just gave him my birth. I didn't tell anything about, about me. But I was like, yeah, that is how I am. And I think it's like, it's, we were talking about this earlier before we were recording where it's like, you know, people aren't allowing themselves to kind of like experience life as it is or how it comes or as themselves. It's like, they're switch. They're uh, outsourcing their thinking. Like, what are, what are, what do I think about this? What's my opinion? How should I be? And they're outsourcing it for one thing. And a lot of these groups, you know, they're the marketing right now that's popular. It's like, oh, escape the matrix. Everyone's saying that, you know. Installed and like, escape the <laughs> matrix. Escape the matrix, and then just join my matrix, and then I am now the yeah. cult leader. It's like. If bro, it's so stupid. But see, uh, you know, we do have me and uh, uh, another brother from one of our, our old groups. We we started our own group, which actually is is it's the polar opposite, right? So we we say to the guys, we're like, look, you do not, you cannot outsource your thinking to us because number one, we're too busy, and then number two is is you know we sit there and we say to the guys, look, there is no this road is is perfect for for everyone or that road or. You know, uh, it could be we had a, a guy just the other day, man. He's he was he just joined, didn't know what he was going to do, had a few skills, and we're like, okay, well, this is what's best for you, because the problem I think with a lot of these people that they're they're marketing, let's call it, is they they're trying to purport the idea that their life is perfect for everyone. Like, is is my life? My life's pretty fucking good, right? But is it perfect for everyone? No, of course not. You know, most people uh, don't want to sit there and work as much as I do. You know, like I was saying before, I was up until five o'clock in the morning on a Saturday, right? Like, so most people don't want to do that. Most people don't want to. Uh, oh shit, yo, you know, my, look really, really uh, hold on. Look it froze again. Deeply become, uh, you know, a, a spiritual man. Most people don't want to do that. But if someone is is looking to go down that route in life then you know that's a, that's a whole different conversation but if someone wants Yo, to go down me? the route of you know go, going and traveling it it's like something that i don't even really enjoy doing because i've seen i've seen everything i've been everywhere there's nothing new for me to see but for other people they want to go and do that it's it really depends on the person but the problem is the personalities of these people they they purport themselves to be godlike and as I've said this many a time, anyone who ever says that they are God-like just pushes you further away from God, 100% of the time, 100% of the time. Yeah. Because they're just, they're, they're degenerates, man. The, the whole lot, I don't know any who are. Yeah. I mean, I have, um, again, through the groups that, that I joined and, and you know, we, we were a part of one, uh, I've met some people that are really cool. 
and uh, I've had I've had some you know some good interactions myself. But this is the difference, right? Because not everything that you know the the people that I associate with, not everything they say, I'm going to agree with all the time. Yeah. And that's fair, you know, and it's like, there's certain things that like someone could be like, oh, you know, you know, work hard, do this. And actually, I learned a lot about like real estate and, and, and you know, managing my money and things like that. And it was like, okay, that was actually useful. But the way they go about, you know, relationships with women and things like that, that's not my style. And that's just me, you know, and, and but I have enough uh, sentience to be able to separate that where it's like, all right, cool. I like this guy. I'll hang out with you. But when it comes to women, I'm not, you know, we're not in the same world, I guess you could say. Um, yeah, it, it is strange. It's like, you know, I, I certainly went down the, the degenerate fucking route, like massively. Like you've seen uh, some of my close, close friends' stories and stuff like that. Like I've, I've, been, I've been there, I've gone down that route, but that was more, it wasn't because, you know, anyone inside of like a group was saying it, right? It was more like, it's easy to do things when you're lost, right? It's very easy to do things when you're lost, um, especially when you have a hole. Um, and I've spoken about this. Like, for me, I was running around, bro. I had, like, fucking f five girlfriends at the same time. And I was still going on more dates. That's how much of a degenerate I was, guys. I'm not saying that proudly. It's, uh, it's fucking disgusting. But part of who I am. And the thing is, I was trying to, f like, fill a God-sized hole with anything, bro. Anything, you know, watches, private jets, the car, uh, like anything. I was trying to see, right, okay, let me just cram everything. Women, the, the money. The, it never fills it. Never fills it, at least for me. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's the idea that you can fulfill yourself with things and people and experiences. I don't think that even experiences, you know, traveling, um, going out with your bros, doing some, some like cool shit. Even that, that isn't actually fulfilling. What's actually fulfilling is the, the connection with those people, right? Mm -hmm. And you having fun and enjoying with those people, which is one of the reasons that, you know, a lot of these, these groups, all of these weirdo Twitter geeks, they always say, yeah, bro, you need to get, you need to get rid of your mom, your dad, everyone, like kill, <laughs> kill yourself. Like, Get rid of everyone. And then you have no one, and then you just rely on the group, right? That's where you, you outsource now your uh, your social skills and, and your communication, your your respect. All of that just comes from one space, which is why, obviously, then you start really, you know, like, getting culted into that kind of a environment. Right. It's a very yes. thing. And it was things like that where I said, man, like, it's like, those are like tactics that street pimps use, like real pimps. Yeah. They do that to brainwash a chick to like, get her to, you know, I got you. Don't worry. I'm all you need. And like, I was, when I started noticing that, I was like, oh, that's a little weird, bro. Like, and, uh, and a lot of these guys, they kind of, they kind of fall for it, which is crazy. Cause you know, a lot of these guys that I've met at least are, you know, they're strong, they're cool dudes, you know? Yeah. So when I see them, like just completely, when it came to this topic, they completely buy into it. No question. I was like, what the hell? How did they what kind of black magic is this? Like, how, how did they manage to get you to get a group of you guys convinced like that? Just seven, seven year olds playing as cosplaying as, as wizards, I reckon. Just food, 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 food <laughs> magic, bro. But no, it's, just, it's, it's very strange, man. It's very strange. It's, you know, it's very easy in life especially when you're outside of, of, of someone else's current mindset, you know, their, their, their experiences, it's very easy to look in uh, like outside in and be like, yo, bro, they're like, you, you're going to fuck up here. Yeah. But you know, when you're in it, it's, it's one of those things. I, and I've seen this so many times where people, people can get very confused very, very, very quickly. Right. Cause I, I, I think especially, you know, young men, we don't know really what the fuck we're doing half the time. Right. Yeah. We don't know. We're just trying to f figure stuff out. And this is the thing, you know, you see a, a man and then you're like, yeah, I want to be that dude. I, I want to mm -hmm. live his life. No, bro, you should not want to live his life. It's your life, right? Right. And, you know, I've had so many conversations about this on, uh, what's it called? Instagram Live, all of this kind of stuff, where, you know, the, these young kids come in. There's, there was one young kid, I won't say his name, but 14 years old, right? And he subscribed to you know a lot of these ideas and ideologies and 
he's like, yeah, man, you know, my mom's uh, having some financial difficulties. I want to be the man. I've got to pay all of the bills. If I don't pay all the bills, I'm a bad son. And I'm like, bro, that doesn't make you a bad son. Like, you're 14 fucking years old. You know what I'm Like, you're, you're, you're a child. You're yeah. a child. And it is, it's very dangerous. Like, the hustle culture, all of this kind of shit it is very, very, very dangerous. Like, I would much prefer... Like, I swear to God, I would much prefer, just like everyone else, if we're being honest, to go chill with my girlfriend. Like, I'm here in the cinema room. You know, we'll sit down, we'll watch a film, a couple of films, series, whatever, right? Sit down, yeah. chill out. It's, it's like, it's a good life. Like, that's relaxing. Going out, um, just even on a walk with her, whatever. Going and see my buddies here, you know? I'm, I'm like you, I'm, I'm bilingual. So I know a lot of the Spanish guys, local dudes. And... It's, it's, it's very dangerous, the idea that, and I think a lot of this comes from like Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all of this kind of stuff, where, you know, you're just shown all of the time, just levels of life, which most people will yep. never, never, ever hear. Um, Bro, and it's, and it's pure, I think that shit is like brain rot, to be real. Oh, I think, I th I think and, and on a mass scale too. Like you, if you, if you kind of take a step back and you just notice and it's, you just notice like the things people are talking about or the way they kind of, uh, try to get other people to perceive them. And it's like, you know, that, that's, it's rare when you meet a person who doesn't care about that kind of stuff, you know? And it's like, even me, like I could be as aware of this as possible, but if I'm constantly scrolling and if I find myself during those times where it's like, oh, I'm uploading content so then that may that means i'm on there and i'm scrolling and then also notice it starts to kind of mess with me a little bit and i'll have to go just put the phone down right now i'm trying to do like a content schedule so i don't do that but i mean it's just the human mind and you're so susceptible to it and these apps are they're built specifically for that you know yeah man it's it is wild it's wild because it's very easy really for for anyone because as as people for for the most part for the most part, people want to be liked, right? People want to be liked. People um, always say that, you know, you want to be liked, you want to have, uh, you know, all of this stuff, blah, blah, blah. But being liked is very different to being respected and being loved, right? Like, I, I always say to my bros, I always say to, you know, my family, um, anyone, right? Anyone who I know really well, like even my business partners, right? I'll, I'll say to my, my business partners at the end of like a three hour meeting, I'll be like, cool, bro. All right. Love you lots, man. I'll catch you later. Right? Like, people are so scared of, of actual connections with people now that it's just, they, 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 they push themselves back right? They push themselves back because they're actually scared. And this is why people are like, yeah, bro, uh, you know, get rid of all of these losers, all of these people. It's like, shut up, bro. Just yeah. go and have fun. Go and have yeah. fun. Like, what the enjoy. fuck is, is wrong with you guys? It's like, and enjoy best, people for right? Yeah, en thing. enjoy people for who they are, too. Like, if you grew up with a buddy, and he, you know, he just wants to have his, you know, his job, and he's got his girl, and then that's how he loves life. Like, bro, accept him for who he is. You don't have to talk business with him. You just, yeah. you know, you have your relationship with him. You know, like, that, it's that. idea is the biggest pile of dog crap I have heard. Yeah, bro, me and my friends, bro, we're just going to sit down, bro, and just talk business. What kind? That's not a friend. And you, yeah. you're both, like, what's, what's wrong with you guys? That's yeah, bro, crazy. we have fun doing that. Number one, uh, and we know a lot of these people, they don't do that, right? They sit no. down and they, they sit down, they get drunk and, and just have a good time. But it's 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 the idea that, that people push forward. And it's just like it's one extreme after another extreme after another extreme. And it's just that where where's I mean, just look at the streamers, right? Just, just anything for clout and it's, it's just it's gross. It's exhausting. That's it's another exhausting. block. That's, that was another like block party I did, bro, where I was like, all these streamers, like, you know, that there's the accounts that just post like news about, I don't know who the fuck these people are. I don't care about what they did or what they didn't do or what they said. Like, anytime I see anything like that, I just block it. Like, I don't, yeah. but, well, all right, look, look, brother, I, um, 
man, we got so caught up in our conversation. I forgot. I wanted to really actually dig into your backstory. We literally just jumped into conversation, but I really wanted to dig into your backstory. Michael J. Ringer. I mean, um, you know, I've known you through the Twitter, really. This is, a, this is the first real conversation I get to have with you. And I, and I, I think it's an honor, right? Um, but I know one, one, I know that you are younger than me. And two, you are highly successful. And I think that's, that's awesome, right? Like, like it's, it's very inspirational, which is cool that I can say that, you know, I know you, uh, but I, yeah, I want to know your backstory, dude. Like, how did you get to where you're at now? Bro, just doing stuff, man. I've just been for, it's, it's funny because I, I, I've got my, my whole adult life up on my Instagram, right? From like, I think even before I was like 16 years old. I got everything there, and every once in a while, I stop. What I uh, like, I'll stop, and I'll be like, "How the fuck?" Like, I'm just a normal dude, right? I'm just a normal dude who just does stuff constantly. But I, I, I look back, and I'm like, "Oh wow!" Like, I did, I did some, I, I, I did some things. I, I did some cool stuff. So I kind of my whole like business. Uh, career really started off with uh, e-commerce did a lot of drop shipping uh, which is something that I used to enjoy I just don't like it anymore because yeah. um, you know I changed from being the guy who didn't like being in front of people to be much 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 more sociable because it was a challenge for me so yeah. from there I went more into to sales built a commission only sales platform with a few buddies of mine that's uh, what the largest now in the world I think 22,000 salespeople on that now. So Wait, the largest you. sales platform in the world? Uh, Commission-only sales platform. Definitely. Oh, wow. Definitely the, the largest. The largest platform, anyway. There's there's some other people uh, out there basically trying to copy it. We ran that for, I think this will be like year seven, year eight. I'm not, like, I'm super hands-off. I'm not doing anything with that anymore. Um, as of last chew maybe i think around that time but uh but yeah so now now i'm just doing a lot of work with some influencers the non-degenerate ones obviously nda is a sign i can't say who but uh doing a lot of work with them helping them to build up their their uh sales team their sales funnels and yeah so built that platform had a fair few investments uh crypto which was fun fun especially being you know super fucking degenerate um, yeah. so i made i made quite a bit in crypto and then lost like a million uh which was not it, like it was it was fun to lose it because it was essentially gambling right it was a, it just right. all of these shit wins and got involved in some projects uh none of them scams i didn't start any of them don't know the the code or anything like that but started off with uh, with those whilst I was doing other stuff, just have not stopped. Sales, obviously, sales consultant. That's always my main thing, um, being a sales consultant, sales trainer. Just properly started redoing that about two months ago. So that's, that's so far going pretty well. Got the first six or seven clients for that. So, yeah, it's going, it's going well. I'm just I'm, – I do whatever – Number one, I want to do like build something, mm -hmm. uh, but I think really for anyone who's just getting started off, the most important thing is always the foundation. Like, why are you like building the thing, right? Right. Because a lot of people yeah. are like, "Yeah, bro, I just want to get rich." Like, okay, why? Yeah, so, bro, what's your foundation? My foundation really is just I, I want to get better, right? I want to get better. I want to do some cool stuff. I want to uh, charities a pretty big thing for me. Um, I want to get better. I want to help people to get better themselves. And, and really, it's, I guess the easiest way to explain it is I, I just want to have that, that domino effect because nothing, I, 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 I what do I take with me when I die, right? Take nothing. Right. And I saw that you're very active. I don't know what the community is, but there's like a community in Africa that you're constantly donating to and, and working with. What is that? Yeah, so it's a uh, it's a Christian orphanage, and the guy who runs it, John, um, super 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 lovely guy. So a lot of that these kids' parents have been killed by you know Islamic jihadists, and uh, yeah, he's been running this this orphanage for like four or five years just by himself. He's got super ill 
I just, I basically, I came across a guy on, um, where was it? On Instagram. Came across a guy just on Instagram. He sent me a message, not asking for money or anything. He was like, hey, brother, can, can you give me a prayer? I'm like, yeah, of course. You know, anyone asks me, I always do it, right? And uh, so I started looking at his profile, started seeing what he was doing. I was like, hey, man, like, tell me a little bit more about what you do. Had a couple of phone calls with him and, uh, yeah, genuinely moving stuff, man. Like, he's he's the only person that these kids have. Um, his, you know, health up and down. Young guy as well. He's like, what, 20, 20, 21, 22, something like that. Wow. Really young guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. You know, he sends me all of these videos, the kids, them eating. They always do like a a little sign. And it's just like, yeah. thank you, brother, brother Michael, and stuff like that. And I was just like, yeah, that's, it, it's, that... it's, it's, it's nice. It's feel good. But, you know, I, I don't, I don't like posting about stuff like that, especially, you know, it's not biblical. So um, I don't like to post about stuff like that. I'll do it if he asked me to, though. Like, that's, that's why, right? I've got a couple of other stuff that I do. Um you know, dog shelters, that kind of thing. Obviously, I've got a dog. She's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you love your dog, dude. I saw that vi that post you did one time where she got sick and you carried her for like seven miles to the hospital or something like that. That sucked. That night sucked so hard. So they, they put anesthesia in her. And um, basically, this is like the third time, I think, second or third time, they put anesthesia in her. And... Uh, basically what happens is dog goes to sleep, dog goes to sleep, dog wakes up and then their whole body, it takes them a while, like an hour before they can properly like walk and just be a normal dog again. And for whatever reason, she was fine when we left the vet. And then she's like, oh shit, legs don't want to work. So I'm like, okay. Well, man, it's like four in the morning. I'm like, I, I just, I need to sleep. I've got to wake up in like two hours, three hours or something. So I just picked her up and took her all of the way back from the vets. At an, a very ungodly hour, but we got back. She was fine. She wasn't in pain anymore. That was the most important thing. But man, she's like, uh, she's put on weight. She's like 30 kilos now. So she's just, yeah, she's, she's a, a big dog. dog. She's a big she's dog. Dude, I saw. I saw you carried her. I was like, that's that's a lot to carry for the long, all those miles that you're walking or the kilometers that you're walking, you know? A lot of fluff, bro. It's a lot of fluff and a lot of fat. But yeah, man, she's, um, she's been, uh, you know, honest, honestly, man, she's a massive lifesaver to me. I love her two bits. That's another thing, you know, a lot of guys are, I don't advise young men to get dogs. I, I like, really don't i got her when i was like 19 because it's a really 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 big responsibility like people yeah. think oh yeah bro i can just walk and walk the dog it's like no like they, trust me bro they, you'll wake up in the morning sometimes random bits of diarrhea and now she, you got shit all over the wall you gotta right. clean it you know um just being there it's they give so much that you kind of have to give back to them it's a very big responsibility so you know when it comes to travel, that kind of stuff as well, guys, you've got to consider these things because you can't do much of it when you do have a dog. So just word to the wise. Yeah. But if you're if you're settled, you know, do, go and get one, man. Yeah, Best no, it's – I used to have a dog. Uh, his name was Bruno. He was a beautiful, beautiful uh, pit bull terrier mix. Yeah, he was the runt of his litter. And, and my buddy who used to like – he was like a professional dog dude, right? Like this guy, that's, that's what he did. That was his whole life. And this was just like the smallest one. He was like, hey, do you want him? I was like, sure. I was 21 at the time. And I took care of this dog. And that, that little dog was like my little baby. And then, yeah. but then I started moving around and I realized I couldn't take care of him. So I gave him to my brother. And uh, yeah, dude, it is one, it is, you're right. It's a massive responsibility. But two, they will give you like, there, there's a saying, there's a saying, and I think it rings true. It said, it goes, you should be the person your dog thinks you are, right? Because to, you could be a fucking murderer, but the dog will love you unconditionally. You get what I'm saying? Like, if you're if you are taking care of a dog, that dog will love you. If you leave the room, he's waiting for you. When you come back, he's happy. You could have been gone three seconds; he's still happy to see you. You know? So it's you. yeah, it's you. yeah, yeah. It's, it's every single time. It's it's weird. To, uh, oh man, I've got. Um, I pissed off the lefties once on my old Twitter. I made a post uh, about this and I was just like, bro, 
if your girlfriend is not looking at you as as a dog is and is as happy as your dog is every single time, then you you you've got to invest a little bit more into your relationship. Bro, the lefties they they do not like that. How can you? They're weird, dude. Kind of it's like that's not what I fucking said, bro. But yeah, dude. they are very very strange. But it's it's true, man. Like the the love love is is what fuels a man, right? Like. 100%. We can we can sit there as much as we want and be like, yeah, bro, like the the the, the Cartier with the with the sapphire is like, oh yeah, it's all like I can work for that. You know, you, you don't work until you're loved, like properly work. You 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 don't. As a as a man you think, oh yeah, man, I'm working real hard. But you you don't. Cuz the second that that you're loved as a man, that's when you're like, oh Okay, sure. There's things that that like I want to do because I want to do them. Right. But outside of that, bro, I will sacrifice absolutely everything, everything for you know my dog. For it's, it's like my dog, man. She's cost me fucking close to I think sixty grand in vets fees and just ridiculousness because she's got this also immune disease. Ironically, from the. Uh, the rabies vaccine so she got like the wow. covid just when covid was happening and i was just like well if they can't get the vaccines right for the dogs right i'm probably not going to be taking them no nah, just some kind of experimental thing right so um but yeah man it's it's when, when you really start working for people outside of you and this is a, what i say to so everyone inside of you know our, our men's group pathfinders i say you have to have a north star whether that is you know, I want to build a, a family because every man does, you know, in four years, five years, 10 years time, whatever. That's the focus, right? That's what you're working for. And then everything starts to align itself properly rather than you going and being some like degenerate. You actually really start enjoying life. You start enjoying more the connections and everything's, it, you know, it lasts longer, man. It lasts longer. And I think that's, that's a very underestimated uh tool for motivation focus is you know focus on on your north star which is building a family man it's what we all want to do anyway so dude you focus. you've got such a good point because so when i was younger um i got involved i was never like i was always like this i was always like easy going fun guy you would never think i was doing anything wrong but i you know for one reason or another i just got involved in um in just moving it was just weed but i was moving like high amounts of like weed all over the country this is back when it was still super illegal and i was doing it out in england and in amsterdam as well and um i was making a bunch of money at my age you know i was making more than my parents at my age but it was like fast money and you know you're around i was around acquaintances that weren't necessarily helping me so it was yeah. It, it was, I was just working for me and I was having, I had a beautiful relationship at this time with this beautiful girl and like just being in that world, it, I didn't appreciate it anymore. And I let, I let her go. Right. And I just, it, it's kind of crazy because you start spending and doing all these things that it doesn't matter. Like you're just on this treadmill and it's just always going, going, going. And again, what I was doing was illegal. So eventually it caught up to me. I got caught and then I was left with nothing. Right. And that was when I realized, you know, and during this time too, you know, my father, my father's like a, he's an old school Hispanic dude. You know, he was in the military as well. So he did not approve of anything I was doing. Like I wouldn't tell him what I was doing, but he didn't like it. And, um, and, but he would always say though, he was like, Hey man, like you need to settle down. You need to get you a good girl. Cause that's going to fix you. Like your, your, your spirit's not in a good place. You need to get you a good girl or like settle down. And I used to tell him like, I really thought like this. I was like, dude, I'm never going to get married. Like, there's no way. Like, look at my life. It's awesome. And I, and I genuinely believed it. And then once I lost everything, right. Because, you know, once, you know, once I got, went to jail, I almost caught a felony and, uh, you know, the businesses that I had crumbled, like I can't do anything anymore. And then the associates that I, I had no network, I had nothing. And that was when I had to sit alone in the darkness by myself and realize that my father was correct. And, Little by little, like, you know, what you said is correct. Cause after a while I got over myself, it, it took time to get over. Like, what do I need? What do I want? What do I 
what do I want to have for my life? And then more, it became more of like, you know what? My parents sacrificed so much for me. Like, what can I do to make them proud? And so that they know like, yo, it was worth it. All the shit they had to put, go through to, you know, legally come into America and work their asses off and give me the life that I have. And, um, that's been the past couple of years. And only recently now it's like, oh, and this is another thing that I, I really admire about you too, because I've also, I'd say in the past year and a half or so, or maybe two years, I started changing the way I would look at relationships in women. I was always a dog, bro. Like I was always, and I was always kind of proud of it too, you know? It's, and now I look- That's the weird thing, right? It, like, it is. Like as well, being a complete degenerate. And I was just like, yeah, bro. Like the, the, the thing, but you look at it, the second that you stop, you're like, oh man, like I don't, I, I, I can't, I can't yeah. go back at that. It's lame, dude. It's lame. And then people try to, and again, I was, I was, you know, guilty of this where I was like, I was kind of proud. Like I would, I would like, I, you know, my, especially my family, like my brothers, even my parents, I just, I want them to know like, Hey, Hey mom, look, I be, I get bitches, you know? And she, and it was like this thing, but I look back now and I'm like, bro, that was so lame. Like, why was I like that? Um, so cringy as well. I mean, but, you know, with, I've, with, I've done it too. I've been there. But it's with it's with you. I think I think you kind of have to like. I've heard this this before, and this is what uh, it's like. I've, I've got my best friend coming um, coming to visit tomorrow for a few days, and uh, he said to me uh, the second that I found my current girlfriend because all all of the girls, even even when I was dating multiple um, at the same time, amazing amazing women. Like really, really good, but I realized like afterwards, like how badly I like I fucked them up, like mentally, because I'm like, oh, you know, the, like some of them were still sending me messages even just a few months ago, and yeah. you know I haven't seen or spoken to them. I don't talk to to, to women, anymore. like I just don't. It's one of those things where I'm like, no, why why would I go and be like chatting to to women, DMing women, flirting with chicks when you know my girlfriend's there she's got like you know 30 followers or whatever on a private instagram account you know why would i go and do that and expect any different from her which is it's weird man because you you look at it and you're like it's like certain things that you've done in life right where you look back it's like for me another one was when i was younger and just uh, addicted to coke i was like what 15 years old and Bro, I was I was waking up. I had an alarm at like three o'clock in the morning. Wake up, do a line, go back to sleep. Like that bad. Holy shit, bro! That's yeah, a problem. That, Yo. that, that that probably fucked up my brain somehow. But you know, I look back at stuff like that, and it's first you really don't want it, right? Because it's just cringy, and you look back and you're like, oh, that's just weird. Oh, I did that. I did that thing. It's like the first time that you walk uh, walk up to a girl, right? And you just flop hard. Like, yeah. Everyone's done it. I don't, I don't even give a shit. Yeah. No, it. dude. Will, like, everyone's it, done it. A hundred percent. And it's just like, it's that kind of cringe. But eventually you, you come to, I don't know, maybe this is just uh, when your brain fully develops thing. Because as men, you know, our brains fully develop. Uh, neurologically speaking, when we are anywhere between 23 to 26 years old, that's when our brain is now actually complete. Which is why, you know, you see a lot of guys properly switch and turn their lives around around that, that kind of time frame. And, yeah. you know, it's, we make some very bad decisions. And I think going back to full circle, we, a lot of guys say, yeah, you know, you've got to go and sleep with all of these women. You've got to go and do all of these things to, uh, uh, to get it out of your system. Right. Like, like it's going to change. Like you're, you're still not going to want to, like, it's, it's, it's always going to be there. Like if, if you have a decent level of testosterone, you know, you sleep well, you work out, it's always going to be there. Right. You're, you're always going to find women attractive. But the question is what you, what do you do about it? right it's always yeah. what what do you do about it and you know it's self-control like people all of these red pill weirdos and dogs sit there all of the time yeah bro you've got a masculine responsibility you've got you've got to be responsible as a man but uh 
when it comes to me keeping my dick in my pants, I can't be responsible, man. It's just my dick. Yes. And that's what I have a problem with. Um, again, like there's some people in the red pill space that I'm cool with because I like what they talk about with finances and, you know, person working out, you yeah, know, personal responsibility. Stuff. That stuff is good. But when it comes to the women, like 99.9 .9 of the whole thing, I, I don't necessarily agree with the message, which is, again, why I always gravitated to the kind of content you put out, um, because I, I also believe it's like, man, you know, if I want to be a, a, you know, high value man, a man of high quality then I got to be able to, you know, master my animalistic urges. I got to be a man. You know what I'm saying? I got to be a man, not a beast, you know? And that's it's how exactly, I looked at it. It's it's exactly that. And I, I said this uh, sometime last year, I think on a podcast, I don't know. Um, but I said this and I said, the, the problem is if, if you are giving into your animalistic desires as a man, then why? You're, you're an animal. You're not a man. A man has control over himself. And, you know, a lot of these guys um, that I speak to just, in, you know, in the DMs and everything else, say to me, yeah, bro, you know, I've got this porn addiction, blah, 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 but I really want to find a really good girl. I'm like, bro, why? God is not going to give you a really good, beautiful, innocent, pure woman when you're corrupted and you can't even control your right hand. Like, yeah. it's just not going to happen. It's not the way that it works. God protects, uh, you know, those kinds of women. And, you know, thank God that, you know, he's shown me the way. Um, but, man, it's just these guys, they think that a pure, a pure woman will not uncorrupt you as a man. She will not make you any less black, your heart, right? And your intentions. Yeah, you, yeah, you got to work on that yourself. You got to work yeah. on that yourself, dude. And I've, I've seen it. Um, I don't. Man, I don't know if I want to say. I'll tell the story. Uh, I had like I was in association with this person, and at first we were hella cool, you know. And then we started working together on different projects, and over time I just started noticing that you know all of his problems, he would blame the women in his life. He had you know multiple wow. divorces, and he had all these problems going on. And he would, and, but he would come back to the group and he would just like the way he would air it out. It was like, I'm doing everything I can. I'm, I'm such a good person for this and this and this, but I, I pay attention, you know, and I'm just, I'm, I'm looking at it like this, these little things don't add up. And then over time I ended up having to move away, move myself away from that group just because I started noticing these little things. And then like a couple months later, the rest of the group called me. They were like, Hey bro, you were right about him. Like yeah. he's, you know, something's up with that guy. But it's it's little things like that where it's like you got to really like be honest with yourself and like where are you at fault where where are you good and it's gonna be uncomfortable it's gonna hurt it's gonna suck you know so you might fun. even cry a little bit you know it is what it is but you gotta you gotta face it and then work on it that's what it is you know and I want to touch on religion good. brother oh sorry that's what were you saying cool. let's go yeah bro it was because again that that's another thing and and again for those of you people watching this right now are probably seeing the excitement on my face because there's a lot of stuff that you put out that i really agree with especially in this age of the internet where most of the shit is fake most of, most of it is larps and most of it is marketing tactics disguised as you know organic content um but you're real about what you do and what you say man and one of the things that i've been following you on is uh like your path with christ and religion right uh, me personally, like I've, I've studied or looked into almost everything you could think of every type of faith or whatever there could be, right. Had my own existential moments. Right. Um, but one thing I noticed with you is you, you kind of were going through something similar and you came to find, uh, Orthodox Christianity, correct? Yeah. 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 So walk me, walk me through your process, brother. Man, you know what this is? It's like. So many people have like uh, really cool, really interesting testimonies. Mine was just, I can remember, man, this was like two, two years ago, something like that. And uh, I was just there. And I can remember I had uh, one of my exes, she came around and she left and I, I, I just, I felt nothing. I felt nothing. And I'm just like, man, all of this stuff that I'm doing, you know, flying around with private jets, going on like cool holidays, having great friends, amazing friends, you know, not necessarily the richest on planet earth, but knowing, you know, insanely wealthy people as well, talking to them every, I'm just like, dude, what is missing? What is missing? And, you know, I started just to, to, to speak to a couple of friends 
like just random friends. And everyone's like, yeah, man, you know, you, it sounds to me like maybe you just need a, a break, right? Because I haven't stopped working every single day for like 10 years. And they're, they're like, yeah, bro, it just sounds like you're burnt out. I'm like, yeah, but I'm not burnt out. I've got more work to do. I'm like, I, 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 it's not that. Well, maybe it's just, uh, you know, you, you're dating too many girls. Maybe it's just your X, Y, Z. And everything that everyone put forward to me, well, I was just like, bro, I, it's not that. I know it's not that. And I had this conversation with my mum, and she was just like, hmm, sounds like, uh, sounds like you're missing God. And I went, hmm, yeah, that's weird. That's weird. God, me? I'm a complete degenerate, right? Like, I ain't, I ain't no. There isn't a way in hell. And, you know, it, it, I just, for some reason, that thought, that conversation, it just sat with me. It just sat with me. And I started just slowly being like, okay, fine. And I'll just, let me just start praying. So I just start praying. Hear nothing, nothing comes back to me. I'm just like, uh, this is weird, but I'll commit to it. I'll, I'll commit to it anyway. Keep on, keep on, keep on. And then I started reading the Bible. Just a little bit, like watching some videos here and there. And I was just like, hmm. This makes a lot of philosophical sense. And theological, and theologically, this makes a hell of a lot of sense. Right. I'm like, yeah, but then, uh, you know, how can, how, how can Jesus be God? Like, that doesn't make any sense. So I'm um, the first because I'm I'm one of those guys. If you're gonna tell me something, I need one hundred percent proof. I need I need undeniable one hundred percent. Okay, this is true. So first, I'm thinking, you know, Jesus is just some random dude that died met, like two two thousand and, and twenty four years ago. Like, it's just a mystical dude. Start looking into right. that. I'm like, oh, he actually really really existed. Like there's the historically there's not even a question as to whether he exists or not. Okay. Like he was a dude. He was out yeah, here like walking he, around and shit. Yeah. And he had like hands and was a yeah. human. like okay. Okay. Hmm. That's interesting. All right, let, let let me do some more research. So I start doing some more research. Because bearing in mind, you know, I, I was um many years ago I was dating this uh, Iranian girl. And if if you're Muslim if you're a Muslim woman, you can only marry uh, a Muslim man. So I started looking into that as well years and years ago. So very well versed with that, very well versed with Buddhism. Used to go to the, the there's a, what do you call it? Temple. There's a temple in, in London. Some of you guys might know it. It's beautiful. Um, in Wimbledon. Beautiful, beautiful temple. And so I used to go there and meditate, blah, blah, blah. But this, I'm like, ah, oh, the historical evidence is undeniably true so let's look and see what how this bible thing comes together let me start looking into that start looking into it I'm like oh oh and then every single time i'm just like oh 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 okay right this is a hundred percent real and i'm like there, there is undeniable fact this is this whole jesus thing this happened and then i start getting into the the, uh, the theology of it because you know a lot of people they sit there and they're like, yeah, bro, but, but uh, Christianity is just a way to control the masses. That doesn't make any sense. Because the the people in power at the time, Emperor Nero, burnt Christians. They burnt them. And they're called Christian torches, if you guys want to check that out. In the street, right? And I'm like, well, how can you say that that's a way to control humanity when the, the, the people who believe in it are also willing to die for it. Not only that, but out of the apostles, all of them were executed in horrendous ways. Horrendous ways. Each and every single one of them, except for one. Um, obviously, Judas killed himself, but that's not here or there. But yeah. he don't count. Judas, yeah, Judas he don't sold, count. <laughs> he sold his soul, man, 30 coins. Yeah. Screw that guy. But, Silver, too. Silver? <laughs> Not even gold, bro. <laughs> it's uh, interesting though, because if if you read, I think it's in uh, where is it, Zechariah somewhere. Check this out afterwards; it's super cool. Um, there's uh, a prophecy about that. It says uh, the man will sell his his um, sell something anyway he, for thirty silver coins, and then 
he will throw the coins into a potter's field. And Judas killed himself in a potter's field. I was like, man, that's oh, uh, so cool, man. Yeah, I'm like, oh, yeah. it's so beautiful how all of these these prophecies connect. And yeah, man, I just I just kept on going, kept on going, and yeah, it's just you just see it's. For me, it, it wasn't like, you know, this magical thing where, uh, you know, Holy Spirit came down, started talking to me and you know, my whole life changed. It was a very gradual thing. Um, you know, and I, I still work on it every single day now. Every single day I work on it as, as much as I possibly, possibly can. And uh, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's one of the most beautiful things because after all of that, I still had some questions, right? Like evolution. How the hell, uh, like evolution? Yeah. Wait, you're saying that, that we didn't come from monkeys. And now I'm like, bro, these people actually think that we came from monkeys. Monkey granddad dudes. Yeah, yeah. Mon <laughs> Monkey granddad yeah, dude. Like, okay. Monkey granddad, bro. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny because you start actually looking into the sciences properly. You know, I'm a very right. scientific minded person you know i've been to uh, and studied for years uh all of the different sciences um and start really looking into all of these things and you're like oh this makes no sense we have zero no. fossil records of, of transitional species um even carbon dating itself is wrong so i mean there's obviously some people have some questions about the age of the earth and stuff like that i'm a young earther personally but it's it's all of it's just it's just fascinating, and the more and more that you look into everything, you really start to see all of the connections. And rather than Christianity being the thing to control the population, it's atheism, it's atheism right. and spiritism. That's and, what's there to control the the, the population. A hundred percent, brother. And you know one thing that I noticed too is like. Once I started looking into this, because again, I, I went through the whole phase, right, for like 10 years. So I, because I went to Catholic school as a kid, right, typical Hispanic mom, she puts me in Catholic school. Yeah. I come out and in my head, I'm like, dude, I'm not Catholic. I was 13 years old. What the fuck do I know? But that was my thought. But ever since that point, oh no, like around 18, 17, I started having questions again, right? And I went through the whole phase of like Eastern mysticism, Buddhism, Hinduism, and then just started going into like all these weird little tunnels and holes and trying to figure things out you know, trying out psychedelics and all these little things literally with the purpose of like, yeah, like, well, what is this whole thing? It's like existential, existentialism, right? And it's just funny that like two years ago, it started off with, again, Islam got really popular, right? And I actually have some family members who converted to Islam on their own accord, not like on some internet shit, but um, it made me look into it. Like what made them go into that? So I, I read it on, into it and I was like, all right, it's interesting. But then that made me look into the Bible and it, it gave me this full circle moment of like, oh, because I started with the Bible. Right. Yeah. And I started reading the Bible. And um, again, some of it is really hard. Like, I don't know where to start. Some of the language is a little difficult, but there's this lady. Her name is Laura. Shout out to Laura. If she's watching this. Um, and she's this like this older woman that I, that I work with sometimes. Super cool. She's a devout Christian. I've known her for years, but she doesn't, she doesn't like push it on you, but she's the yeah. sweetest person ever. And if you bring it up, she'll talk to you about it. And she, yeah. she told me basically like the conversation started one day. I hadn't seen her for years and I see her. And then, um, you know, she tells me how she lost her job at, at this big hospital that she's had for 20 years because she wouldn't get the jab. And, yeah. uh, it was for religious reasons. And then we got into the whole conversation of the Bible and she started explaining to me, how the Bible tells you how to eat. Like you're not supposed to eat pork. You're supposed to eat, you're not supposed to eat catfish. You're supposed to like, and then she brings, she, she knows the Bible. So she shows them, shows me like the, the, the verses or, or whatever. Right. And in that moment for me, I was like, oh, that's crazy. Cause all this stuff that everyone's trying to do with how to like, oh, how to eat healthy, uh, proper work-life balance, uh, relationships, you know, gender roles, all that stuff. It's all there in the book. It's literally there. You pick that up, you read it, you got the answers and you just practice it. It's, it's, it's insane. It's it, on, on, honestly like you read it. And if, if you apply it to now, it's like, Oh, like this thing. The, yeah. Like this whole thing makes sense. And you know, there, there's some people that, that struggle with like old Testament, um, Yahweh and you know, new Testament Jesus. Because people are like, well, how can that happen? And blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, we did kind of 
do some really terrible things, right? Like, not bad. Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. Sodom and, yeah. Like, There's a lot going on. <laughs> crazy. And, and what happened even after that with uh, Lot's two daughters, man, getting him drunk and doing a couple of weird things with him. Bro, it's, it's there's so much there's so much to to it that is if you look properly at, at anyone's life, it's it's gonna be fixed. You know, it's like me and my girlfriend, we sit down, well um what was this? Like last year, we sat down because neither one of us when we met were Christian, right? right. So <laughs> um she obviously she followed my lead. As all things should be, right? Um but, you know, she sits there, she'll, she'll read Proverbs 31 a, a, a few times a week just to remind herself, this is who I have to be as a woman. I, I read, uh, you know, one of my favorite um, uh, Bible quotes is uh, Timothy, 1 Timothy 5.8. 1 Timothy 5.8 says, um, a man who doesn't provide for his family is worse, worse than a disbeliever. I did a whole little sermon on this. Um, oh. last Sunday on Twitter, actually, because people wanted it. I'm like, okay, like, you're holding it. sermons. Yeah, man, it's weird. It's oh, weird. dude, that's yeah, sick. It's super weird, bro. <laughs> so, but yeah, I, I post because a guy on on uh, Twitter or was it Instagram? Anyway, guy on social was just like, yeah, bro, could could can, can you do it? And I'm like, bro, there's no way that it, it's just got to be this one guy who wants it. And then I got flooded with DMs, like 20 DMs of people being like, yeah, man, like, do it. I'll, like, I might not be able to watch it at the time, but I'll re-listen to it 100%. I'm like, okay, it looks like I'll, I'll hold some summons now. I'm like, fine. Yeah. But it's, it's cool, man. It's cool because it's wildly beautiful. It, like, the everything's there for you, right? You have some questions. Even if it's not there, you know, you just pray. Yep. Just pray. And a lot of people want to be, want to replace God with something else. It, it, trust me, man. It's it's impossible. It's impossible. You know, you can, you can try and replace him with whatever you want. Go ahead and try it. But you, you, it's, it's only momentary happiness, right? Like, And I, I think that is uh, the illusion of control. Uh, one thing I've learned, and I'm sure you've gone through, you know, hard times in your life, right? And one thing that I learned through mine, going through hard times and then having those hard times ease up is realizing like, oh, I have no control over this. But you know what I can do is like put my faith into it, right? Or, or put my or, – or leave it into God's hands and just put my faith that, look, everything is going to work out. Maybe it doesn't work out how I plan, but maybe my plan isn't – that's not my plan. Right, I'm an instrument for what God is trying to make happen, and I'm part of a God. It's bigger than me, you know. Yeah. And honestly, that makes me feel so much better than you know me trying to control me. It because it's like this thing of like everyone wants to be. I, I always say this: everybody wants to be Michael Jordan. Everyone wants yeah. to be the star player, and they control their whole universe and everything. There are some people that have that kind of personality characteristic, or you know, to a degree. But at the end of the day, it's like this is. This isn't, you know, there's so much things going wrong. You so many variables that the the illusion of control is just that. It's an illusion, bro. Yeah, it's too much, man. It's 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 too much. And I'm a I'm a fucking control freak. Like I need I need everything done. You're a 33 life path, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, bro. All right. Can we do the numerology thing? Because I wanted to ask you about that. We can do the numerology thing, man. It's it, Gary's. Gary's my guy. Gar, Gary's my guy, and uh, the prophet as well. They're, they're my two guys that, that got me into this. And it's funny because me and um, Gary GG thirty three. Shout out to you, bro. Um, we uh, first met on Twitter, and I, I I was just fucking tearing him a new one. I'm like, it's numerology thing. What you guys just you know trust in in, in numbers and blah blah, like. I, I steer clear of it for the most part um, because, you know, as a Christian, you just, I, I don't care about anything else. I just trust in God, right? What So that's that's always me. But the more that you, like I started looking into it, I'm like, oh, there's a whole ton of, of numerology, uh, numero, eh, num, numerology, there we go. Yeah. Um, 
in the Bible, like in certain certain whole uh, parts of the Bible, are actually numeral uh, numerally there anyway. Numbers patterns, right? Yeah. Numbers patterns and poems, and this uh, I'm like, oh wow, this is actually really cool. Like I don't know how deep the rabbit hole goes because I just don't care. Yeah. I don't care, so I don't want to find out. But yeah, man, that's that's me. I'm I'm like the thirty three. Yeah, so you're the you're the big influencer. You're the you're the big dog when it comes to this. Uh, what they call, you know, when I talked to Catwise, he's, he called it the Matrix. He's like, this is just the Matrix, and it's all programmed, and you know, not Matrix like how everyone on Twitter talks about it, but yeah, like yeah. it's just this programming. And man, it's like how, same thing, right? So, you know, when I came into numerology, um, I came into it by accident. I stumbled upon it years ago but didn't pay too much attention. And then only recently noticed it got popular during my time that I'm trying to, you know, get closer with God, right? Christ through the Bible. And so me, a little hesitant, like, I don't know. I don't know about all this uh, numerology stuff. It seems like a little, another little way to get you away from God. That's yeah. what, that was my initial, right? And um, yeah, just like you, I, I just, I noticed that, so there's some people that I admire in history, Leonardo da Vinci being one of them, right? And him, it was a high focus on geometry, high focus on math, numbers. And then you got guys like Nikola Tesla, again, high focus on numbers. And like, it just seemed like this little pattern of like, okay, these guys that actually like paid attention to the numbers of things, they figured things out like on a high, high, high level. And so once I started kind of just paying attention to that, you realize like, oh, actually, if you break everything down, it really does. Everything ends up coming down to numbers. Even like this desk that I have in front of me, someone had to do the measurements to put this desk together. If there was no numbers, there would be impossible to do, you know? And so when I talked to Catwise about it, you know, uh, he was just saying, he was like, look, put it like this, you know, numbers are, you know, God's language. To, like we can't, we can talk in our language, English, Spanish, Cantonese, whatever, but like, that's how he that's one of his forms of communication is through numbers and i was like oh okay that that made sense to me it's the way i see it is it's it's like the maths is is for me a very big proof that god exists just mathematics as as a whole because if god didn't exist then how would we have any physics in the first place like it, it how would we be able to predict with numbers uh, and mathematics? And because math mathematics is different to uh, numerology, by the way, that's, um, but it's a very big proof for me because it's like, it's the code of the universe, right? So it's like God is the, the coder who's completely outside of it, completely outside of it. He just set the parameters. Uh, he set the parameters and then we broke the parameters, the initial parameters, and he's like, "Fine, okay, go ahead." But here's here are the new rules, and they set the new rules out once Adam and Eve decided to eat eat the uh, the fruit, right? And then that was it, right? It's brand new code, and that was the code as 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 it was, and and it still is today to to some degree. But yeah, it's it's the code of it, right? I don't see. It's like if you can understand the code of something, you you might not be able to change the thing, but you can at least see certain patterns, right? It's all pattern recognition, and I think that there's it holds it certainly holds credence, you know, it holds credence. Yeah. But it's it's one of those things because I was I was super into um, you know the occult and stuff like that. It's like my whole arm, actually, my whole arm is like full of full 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 of it's yeah, like a cult stuff. Yeah, bro. Yeah. See, I was that that was the kind of shit I was studying too. Like things like the like yeah. geomatria and like yeah, yeah. Fucking the it's, the the tree of life, the seed of life, the tree. flower of life. Yeah, all of it, man. And it's it's funny because everyone's looking for for secrets, but when you realize that the the Bible itself is there and that is the the secret, then you're like, oh, that was too easy, man. It's like, why, why was that so easy? And I, I always took the, the hard route. Yeah. But 
I think I think that's uh, certainly something that some of us, especially high IQ people, we we need to do, man. We we got to figure it out. We got to find out the 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 truth and and how things connect. But once you, even the Bible itself, man, the the amount of connections is unbelievable. It, it's, yeah, it's so ridiculously beautiful that once you really start understanding how one thing affects another thing, and he's like, oh, dude, that's so cool. Like it's, right. it's, it's so cool. And I used to think that the Bible and you know, everything, I just thought it was boring, super boring. But now I'm doing like Bible AI videos to make everyone else be like, Oh, dude. That's what that's about. and those are fucking amazing, bro. Like you are killing it. The cross crusader, right? Yeah. That's the cross dude. They're sick. And I actually, I really applaud you for taking the initiative to do that. Cause like, you're really taking this, the AI, you know, this whole technology, I love technology, right? Like I'm, I, I enjoy using it, learning it or whatever, but there's a part of it that for me is some, some about it feels a little sinister. And I yeah. love the fact that you took this AI and you were like, okay, I'm going to use this for God's word. And you just started, you know, revelations and things like this. And you're putting in these beautiful graphics, bro, you are killing it with that. It's I appreciate it, man. It's it's so much fun. I say it's fun. It's not fun doing them. It's actually a massive pain in my ass. It takes way too long, and then I have to come up with like a the a way to tell the the story in a biblical way as well. And I'm like, ah, oh. a seven had like AI is 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 cool. Like it's good, but trying to come up with a consistent dragon in a specific style that has seven heads, it ain't that good, right? It yeah. Good yet. So I have to keep on playing around, and I'm using like uh, uh, Canva, Photoshop, AI on them as well. Such, it's it's, but it's super cool, man. It's it's, it's I love it. I love it. But I, it's it, it's one of those things where everyone's like, yeah, bro, AI is gonna be the antichrist and all of this. I'm like, okay, cool. So everyone thinks that AI is gonna be evil. I think AI is gonna be pretty evil too. So if it's evil, what better way to piss off Satan? Then use something that's evil for for good, and I'm like, yeah, let me try that. And now I'm just uh, I'm super on it, bro. I love it, man. And you, dude, I mean, overall, like you are killing it with social media. Like again, before you got kicked off Twitter, you had about 10k followers, and then I seen you just bounce right back as soon as you got a new account. Uh, Ringer yeah. redeems for everyone who doesn't know. You got to check them out. And then um, you know you're killing it on Instagram, and then you got the Cross Crusader. Like how, how are you coming up with like your brands and like your message delivery? Cause it's so, one thing I like about you and I, and I, I see this, I like it because I see it in myself, right? A little bit selfish to be honest, but, uh, something about you that I noticed is like, you're very multidimensional, right? Like yeah. you talk about different topics, right? You're, you know, you're a man of Christ, but you're also in sales and also you're going to, you know, if you see some fucking person that's talking too much shit and they're not backing up, you're going to call them out. Like. You're a multi-dimensional person, but somehow you make it cohesive and it's a really well put together brand. How how do you, how are you doing that? Do you know, I keep on having this conversation and it's really simple. I'm just me. Like you guys can go and watch any podcast. You guys can go and listen to any um, live that I've done. I'm just me. I don't pretend like I'm some perfect dude. You know, I, I don't lead with money. I, I it's something that I was doing, you know, when I was um, being a degenerate, especially for like Instagram, uh, you know, a lot of, and you guys can see, you know, like all of the posts there and stuff, but it's just, I'm me, I'm me. And if someone doesn't like it, I'm just like, cool, you don't have to, not everyone's going to like, I have so many people fucking hate me and that's cool. You know, that's cool. It's their loss, not mine. <laughs> And even better, I don't. I, I get less people to talk to. I'm busy, right? So that's real. It's not, and I think that this this is really the the issue, right? Especially on social media, everywhere else, everyone's people don't people are scared about what people are going to think. I don't give a shit. I really don't care. I don't answer to to Jim up Jimbo five thousand who's an Anon account. I also don't answer to whoever <laughs> these you know hundreds of thousands of. I don't answer to any of you. I answer to God. I answer to right. God. So, uh, like that's I'm gonna be me, and I'm gonna come in and just give people as much value as possible. Like obviously, you know, there's um, time. I don't have enough of it. No one, no one does. But 
um, you know, I can't I just give as much of me. And I think that's the thing that a lot of guys miss is they think, oh, yeah, bro, like you have to be this and you have to be that. Bro, just be yourself. Yeah. Be yourself. But there's a big but to that because some most guys should not be themselves because they're degenerate fucking weirdos. <laughs> but you you have to be yourself, but you also have to be improving yourself every day. Every, however it is, you know, it could be, you know, the gym, it could be getting closer to God, it could be just learning cool stuff. It's like one of the things I want to learn at the minute is uh, these 3D rendering things, man. Like I hmm. see guys doing all of that and I'm like, that's so cool. I want to learn that. So that's on my list for, for, for this year. But you just, you have to live your own life, guys. Like not everyone's going to accept it. Not everyone's going to like it. Some people are going to hate it. It's, fuck them. Like, it, it's it's you, right? Are you living for, for them? Or are you living for you? Because there's only one. There's only one choice. And you live right. one or twice, obviously, if you're a Bristian. But uh, you only get one life on this earth as it is now. Right? You'll get a second time when, you know, after Revelations. But the, the matter of the fact is, if you're living your life for other people, you 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 forfeit your own life so you're just gonna be you man just be cool and this is the thing i don't care especially about the whole social media thing i, I actually despise social media with a passion i hate it absolutely hate it it was like two years it's like ago, a necessary evil huh yeah it's like i said to myself i'm like right I hate all of these degenerates and these which is just dickheads who are coming out online there. I see how they, their, their manipulation tactics and stuff. Um, and I see, because obviously, you know, as a salesperson, I know manipulation very, very, very well. And I see all of the, the neuro linguistic programming that goes into what they say, how they say things. Um, and I see what, what it does to the kids. And I'm just like, you know what? Fuck these guys. Fuck these yeah. guys. I'm actually, if I'm, but if I'm going to do this, I need to properly do it. And this is one of the things about this year. This year, I'm like, right, cool. Socials. I'm actually going to do it, which I don't want to do. But no, we need you out there, man. We need you out there. Cause again, like it's, it's, it's weird. It's, you've got a, like, there's a lot of marketing out there that looks like just like, or get people being organically themselves and it just fucks people up. And I, I like what you said too. Cause um, you know, I've, I've always been fortunate enough to like always find myself, you know, in close proximity with people that are impressive in whatever they do. Right. But I never did that by trying to be somebody else. I, you know, and I, and again, going back to what I said, like the Michael Jordan thing, I like to say, like, everyone wants to be Michael Jordan. I always say, Hey, I'm not Michael Jordan, dude. If anything, I'm like Dennis Rodman, you know, like I got good defense. I can catch a rebound and every couple days I'm going to take off, but I'm always going to be there when you need me. That's me, yeah. you know? And, and just by doing that, I always found myself in close proximity with people that are, you know, in general impressive. Uh, but what I see happening right now, is like this, like, we came up in this super, you know, consumerist society where from birth, you're marketed to like, feel like you are less than, you know? Yeah. And so it's easy for people to just come in and fill that space with whatever, you know, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna drive lamborghinis and wear rolexes and you, that's how you're going to get the women and Stop. or or all that so bullshit nice. all that yeah. and it's all of it is fake bro it's not even real most, most of the people that are even proposing the idea they're fucking broke right, right. like they're actually yeah. broke they don't have uh like they, they go to turkey excuse me they go to turkey they, they buy some fake rolex they go to uh dubai they've got some dude there who's got a lambo who everyone just takes pictures in. He lets them drive it once. He gets like a couple of grand, whatever. It's just, oh, it's all so, it's like, bro, the amount of, because, you know, me and my business partner, AG, we, um, he's also at 33, actually. He's the guy that, that I run Pathfinders with. So it's like super powerful. AG Smooth Top, right? Yeah, my brother. Yeah. I see, I see you guys always tagging each other. Yeah, that's us, bro. And it's, we know like what goes on, especially behind closed doors. Like I'm not going to expose anyone, but it's it, it, all of this shit online is just fake. All of it. You know, you, you'll go to an event with some of these, these dudes 
And then, you know, the bill comes, bill's like 10 grand, and all of a sudden, everyone's credit card isn't working. Oh, yeah, bro. They, oh, you know, wow. they just blocked it. What, like, all of this this shit. And it, it is the way that it is. I, I just understand that people, people people do just mark it. I refuse, I flat out refuse to, to lead with money. Like, you know, we've got some of the guys inside of the group, literally, I just posted a, a testimonial yesterday inside of my Telegram. This, this one guy, Tom, he's gone from, like, zero in the past couple of months. He's making 13 grand a month now. Wow. Better relationship with his wife, everything else. You know, but we don't like to lead with money, but that's the only fucking thing that everyone wants. So we're like, okay, fine. If you guys want to see, you know, how people are making money inside, fine, we'll focus on money. But it sucks, man. It sucks because I don't, I do not like the game. But at the end of the day, if I'm going to go against the degenerates, then I need to play their game to some degree, right? Yeah. No, well, I, I think there's... There's something to say about that, and you're right. But that's why I was saying, man, no, we need you. We need you out here doing the, you know, in the trenches fighting the good fight because that's just the name of the game. And it's just like most people, yeah. like, for example, with these podcasts and stuff, these YouTube, I'm learning little things, right? So I had to learn how to make the thumbnails. Also, I have to learn how to, like, write, a, um, what is it called, the like, the, the title or the captions or the title in a way that, like, engages people that makes, like, piques their interest, right? And it's yeah. not... Some people could say like, oh, that's manipulative or whatever, but it's like, no, no, no. But I've got a message to share and I, and it's genuine and, and, and but I have to get people to want to watch it. So it's yeah. like, but once people come into your world and they see what you're about, what you're talking about, you know, they're not getting led astray. They're getting led yeah. down the right path. So yeah, I think like there's, there's good manipulation, and bad manipulation. Like I, I always say this, if, if you as, as, as a salesperson or, or even at all in your life, if you have to manipulate someone to believe something which is wrong or that isn't right or righteous or something that isn't going to help them then right. you do it you, you're playing the game wrong you're playing the game wrong like a pos a good salesperson a good business person uses positive manipulation to help someone to overcome their own barriers and their own uh issues that they have in it about doing something that is actually going to help them Right, so there's positive manipulation, that there's there's negative manipulation. And people just think, oh yeah, but that's manipulation. That's bad. No. It's it's not bad. Like if I can get someone who's fat to get go to the gym, how is that a bad thing? Right. No, and I, I think there's something to say that you are using your skills, your gifts, and your experiences that were given to you by God to help other people. So again, you're like acting as a vessel in that way. At least that's how I like to think of it, right? So it's like, okay, I have the skill of of speaking. I can speak. I can break things down. If I have a conversation with someone, I can, and I'm good at understanding people. So then let me try to use that for good, right? Where some yeah. people can probably use that for, for bad. Bro, I know, I know. Cause, and you know, you know, I've built some sales teams for some, some influences, and I know, I, I've even told them exactly how to negatively manipulate people before, right? I've, I've come up with a whole fucking funnel for it. And, you know, it's, peop, people are tired, I think. People are, like, everyone's tired, everyone's exhausted. The same nonsense again and again and again. The same type of clone, you know, and no one's actually got any personality. It's just like, cool, what, what does anyone actually say? Yeah, bro, go to the gym. Bro, this guy, <laughs> this guy just changed my fucking life. It's like, bro. Mind-blowing. Oh, my God. What do you mean he, he just changed your life? That's dumb. You went to the gym. You picked up the, the, the weights. And this is what people do as well. This is a whole part of their, their manipulation cult tactics is once someone starts being the uh, the perpetrator of the thing that you have done, then... Now you're thanking them instead of thanking yourself, which is a way to get into your, your psychology. That's powerful. Your psyche. Oh, it's crazy, man. This is why I always say to everyone that there's only two people that you need to thank for every single thing that you do, whether it's good or bad. And that is you and God. Like it says, it says in the book of Job, I forget where it is. I think it's like 18, three, um, maybe 12. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You guys can look at it. But it says in Job, um, why, um, you're acting like uh, 
like a woman because all, all that you want to do is thank God for when things are good. Who are we to just thank God when things are good? Are we not supposed to thank him for when things are bad as well? All right. And this is the thing, guys. It's, it's all you and God, right? Like God isn't also, God is not going up to girls and beautiful women and talking to them, right? Like he might say, like, uh, and this is what everyone does as well, which is also not true. Where everyone's just like, everything, everything is God. Did God, like, go figure out which house you're, you're going to rent? Did God, fit, like, go and, and work as hard as possible so that you can pay for the holiday that you're going on? Right? Like, no, that was you. It's you. It's good to thank God, but it's not everything is God as well. And people people need themselves just as much as they need God. Maybe a, a few degrees lower, but you can't lose yourself in just humility to everything. You are humble to God, but you also need to build yourself up and your, and your character up. Bro, I'm not yeah. here. I'm not sat here, you know, wearing very nice watches and, you know, in my cinema room and just chilling because, you know, God just woke up and one day and said, yes, I favor you. No, no, that's not how he works, right? He gave me a life and free will to do whatever I want to do with. And I've sat here and I fucking worked my ass off. Yeah. So it's, it's much the same, guys. You can't, you have to work for it. But the stuff that you have, you know, be thankful for it. But also, <clears throat> funny story something that happened recently i said i i was praying and um uh, i asked god i said take away everything that, that isn't from you mm. and bro i swear this took maybe two weeks no it wasn't even that it was less than a week it's a few days a few days later <clears throat> one of my investments completely wiped out i'm talking hundreds of thousands completely wiped out one of my bank accounts I'm not going to say how much money was in there completely wiped out cannot touch it can't get back to it there's some weird tax thing that i can't fix so money's frozen and right. i'm like when i said take everything <laughs> away that isn't from you i didn't realize that yeah okay all right now i see okay fine fine i see it now and that was actually one, one of the the moments that kind of propelled me to uh, because th this whole cross crusader thing, I only started doing that because I said to, to the men in our group, I said to them, look, I will teach you guys personal branding. I, and I will show you firsthand how, how to do it, how to use AI. I'll show you guys everything. And I'll show you in real time and I'll build my own brand. And what, less than two months now. And it's, uh, I think nearly 20 K on, on Instagram. And so that also propelled me to, to start doing that. Cause I'm like, Oh, let me start doing something that's positive. Not just for me, that makes me money, but let me do something positive for, for God and God's work, which is awesome, man. It's super, super cool. But this is just trusting God's plan, right? Trusting yeah. it because I could eat, I could very easily got real pissed and I was, I'm not gonna lie, you lose that much money and you, you get pissed. Yeah. You get pissed and you're like, fuck. But at the same time, I'm like, cool. If this is what he wants, it's what, what he wants. Cool. All right. We've got stuff and that's, to do. And that, that's where it comes into just, you know, again, we, we don't have control over everything. We feel like we do sometimes, but at the end of the day, you know, he, he has the final say. And I, uh, but I completely agree with you with the whole, you know, you got to give yourself credit. Uh, I have some family members. Um, that are, I think that, I think it's the term is like evangelical and for everything for them is like, you know, everything is God, every, they take themselves away completely. But I, I look at their, their way that they live and their lifestyle. And it's like, dude, like with the amount of like praise now, like you should, yeah, you need to start doing things for yourself a little bit, you know, like I think maybe, and, uh, you know, I'm no expert. I don't know anything. Right. I, I'm learning, but the way I look at it is like. Look, if you have faith, true faith in God, but you also have faith in yourself and your abilities and your willingness to work, to put in the time, determination. And if you have that, God will put the right opportunities for you to little by little develop and succeed, you know? And um, I mean, I, I think you're a testament to that. And uh, 
Yeah, mm-hmm. man. I, I think there's, there's, it's like, it's like a two way road, right? Like it's not all you, it can't all be you. Like it's impossible, physically impossible for it all to be you, but also it can't be all God. Cause you need to have like a little balance of the two. Yeah. It's like, you know? it's like, it's like the Trinity to some degree, right? It's just like, it can't, uh, that Jesus is not God, but they are one of this, you know, it's, it's one of those things is that the, there's a very fine balance to it because you kind of, you can't get to become prideful, right? Like mm-hmm. if I lose absolutely everything tomorrow, cool. Like it's fine. It is what it is. It is what it is. Um, but you also can't negate yourself to, to nothingness, right? You can't just be this little thing that is, um, just like a little small play thing yeah that's not how, how your life is you can't just sit there in the wind there's a funny story uh, um this man was I think it's more of a parable anyway but it goes like this this man um knew that a flood was coming and his neighbor uh says to him oh the, the, you know we're all leaving what are you gonna do and the man says well don't don't worry god's god's got me god's got me He's, he's going to save me from this. And so neighbor's just like, okay, that's kind of weird, but okay, fine. <laughs> Rain starts coming down. And the flood starts to happen. And the neighbor, just as he's leaving, he goes and says to the guys, are you sure you don't want to come? Like the, 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 the whole house, like everything is about to get flooded. And it, that's it. Man goes, no, nope, that's it. I'll just pray, pray to God. I said, okay, no problem. Man keeps on praying to God, flood waters rise and rise and rise. So God, please help me, please help me. And then next day, a car comes uh, from, uh, what was it, policeman anyway, knocks on the door. Hey, look, so you, you know, you, you've got to leave. We can help you leave. Man goes, no, 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 it's okay. God's got me. It's okay, fine. Flood keeps on rising, keeps on rising. Now a boat comes. Look, you know, we can save you from... No, God, God's got me. Oh, dude. The next day, uh, the man drowns, right? So the man goes, gets to heaven. God, why didn't you save me? I I tried to. I sent you the opportunity of you going with your neighbor. I also sent you the opportunity of going with the police. And I also sent you the other one. I also sent you the boat. You decided to die. It's like, oh, yeah. See, now that makes sense. And a lot of opportunities, I think, for people, it's very easy to see with hindsight, but having foresight, like the way, seeing how things could connect down the line in the future, that's like, if you guys can master that, you, your life is going to be very happy. Very, very, very happy. But be grateful for everything, man, because just as we're here now, might not be tomorrow. Yeah. No, there's, there's like a, there's a saying, I don't know if I made it up or I probably read it somewhere and I convinced myself that I made it up, but, um, there's a little saying that I like, I always keep close to my heart and it's, uh, um, you right now in this moment, you're living out one of the prayers that you had last year. And it's easy to forget that, right? It's super easy to forget that. Like right now, again, I'm, I, I work in corporate, right? I work in corporate sales. And, um, I'm, you know, it's, it's, it's business development. So I'm not like high up on the chain. I'm pretty low, yeah. but it's at a good company. People got laid off. I stayed, they, they like me for whatever reason. And, um, uh, you know, sometimes it gets hard, right? It's not an easy gig. It's a lot, it's like a, a lot of a, a toll. There's a lot, there's a lot that comes with it. And sometimes it's hard. And sometimes you're just like, oh man, this sucks or whatever. And then I think back and it, and it's instinctual because it was such a hard time for me that, Back to when, again, when I was basically a career criminal, lost everything. Now I have nothing. I don't have a network of people because everyone that I used to do business with was also criminals. Um, I don't have, I didn't have an education. I didn't go to college. I didn't have all these other things. And I had to start from literally zero and painfully work my way up to where I was in that moment where I was, where I'm frustrated. And I realized like, you know what, dude, like this is a, this is a blessing. Like I'm blessed to have this problem. Cause I'd rather have this one than the one that I had, you know, two years ago. Exactly. No. And it's, it's, it's that kind, kind of perspective on life. Cause people, people, what people miss the most 
is gratitude, man. Like everything now, oh, well, poor me, poor me. You get to, to live. Like the, the, the fact that you're able to live in and amongst itself is ridiculously like, yeah. it's what? 30 it's trillion beautiful, to one. bro. 30 trillion yeah. to one. Bro, Question, can you hear that? Can you, can you, is that going through the microphone? There's like a vendor outside yelling. I don't know. You can't hear it? Oh, yeah. I can hear it a tiny bit, but it's fine. Oh, okay. Okay, just, cool. All right. Well, that's, All right, no it's, worries. It's Columbia, bro. Yeah, yeah, dude. They're out here selling fruits and shit. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it, man. But, but yeah, it's, it's grass. The second that you're grateful for things, especially for people, this one that most, almost everyone misses. Um, yeah. Show you show you're grateful, especially to to the people that you guys love. Show it, man, because they know it intuitively. But actually showing that you're grateful, I make sure every single day, multiple times a day, how that my girlfriend knows whatever she does. She can, um, you know, she, every morning she always gets me uh, coffee, fruit, and my water. Right. Always puts it straight at my desk because I wake up, I'm boom, I'm, I'm there, I'm going to my desk, I've got stuff to fix. I know that something bad is happening. So I make sure every single time that she knows how grateful I am. It's not just, yeah, oh, yeah, thanks. It's not just, yeah, let me ignore it. Like, get to the point where you are so grateful for everything that if you miss saying thank you to someone, that you feel bad. Yeah. Right? Like, that's, that is, for me, that's changed everything, man. Change to everything. Yeah. No, that that's actually really powerful. And it's sometimes, because often the people that we love the most are the people we take for granted. I know I'm guilty okay. of that. You know, it's something that I've had to work with, work on hard. Like, I'd say the past three years, um, definitely the past year or so. And, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, once once you put that level of gratitude on things, especially for people, especially people who love you, um, you know, family, friends, wife, girlfriend, whatever it is, you know, it's, I, it, it does something. Your quality of life just goes up in a way that I, I don't even know how to put it into words. Yeah, it's, it's because, especially as men, what we do is we keep a lot of emotion inside. And then it's like one day, it's like, why, why is, uh, this is something I hear about. Why is my wife or girlfriend, why is she not grateful? I'm working all the time. Have you explained to her anything about your day? No, of course I haven't. Oh, so how the fuck is she gonna know what you got going on, bro? Right. Like, oh well, I don't. I don't want to complain. No, you don't complain like a woman. You don't sit there and bitch and like, oh yeah, this dickhead did this. No, you don't do that. What you do is you say, look, you know, I had this problem. This is how I solved it. We've got this thing going on. This is how I think I'm gonna solve it. Yeah, yeah. That's what she she needs. She right. needs to know. Okay, yeah, this, the guy that I'm with is the problem solver. My girl, right. any problem she has, anything, tell me, it, it fixed, two minutes. Oh, yeah. I, you know, this thing's happening, I feel ill. Cool, let me sort you out. Like, that's really what a capable man does, and that's what women want. It's not the fucking money, it's not, it, like, you need to be the problem solver. That's the man. They, women do not care, well, I mean, they do, obviously, to some degree, about the money. But they care much more about the living a calm peaceful life calm peaceful zero problems because you're you're the problem guy we're all yeah. the problem guys yeah. yeah and then they know they know that they can rely on you and i think also the whole fact that you said where it's just like you know where you talk to the woman and you're telling her like oh you know i got this going on and this is how i fixed it it also kind of brings her into your world a little bit so she feels a little yeah. bit more involved and i think that's like a a form of intimacy in itself that um you know a lot of these guys on the internet would probably be like oh no, she makes me a sandwich. Can't say that. Yeah, she, she, she. You can't say that. Oh, it's funny, man. It's like Rolo last year. He um, posted that my girlfriend just, just. What was it? She made me breakfast or something. Yeah. And Rolo posts, and he's like, "Yeah, that's that's what you call uh, a fat mating tactic." I'm like, Rolo, shut the fuck up. All that you guys sit there and talk about is how women should should be good cooks. I'm now showing an amazing breakfast, and you're still bitching. 
about how oh, it's just fat me. She's trying to make you fat. I'm like, bro, there's a thing called the fucking gym, right? Like, <laughs> we don't. Like, it's, it's retards, a lot of them. And they will always have something to complain about. Always, always, always. Instead of yeah. uh, people, they, they, they just live miserable lives. I don't care what you see online. It's all miserable, especially behind closed doors. It's always yeah. Miserable. I don't, um, I mean, there, there's that one dude that you, <laughs> there's a one dude that you exposed, I don't know how long ago it was, where I don't know how you came up on these photos of him getting liposuction and all types oh, of shit. Bro. Dude, you just, I got my you guys, flamed that guy, bro. I flamed it, yeah, that alpha male dude. I flamed him so hard. So he posted, yeah. um, he posted this thing saying, oh yeah, I'm oh, like, I'm this great fighter and this, that, the other. I don't have a problem with a guy. But it's just like, yeah, I'm a great fighter in this, that, the other. Literally, some other dude, I think it was Sneaker, actually posted uh, uh, a fighting thing. And you can see that he's not a good fighter. So I just said, yeah, bro, you know, you, you're not a great, a great fighter. Like, here's the video. Yeah. And uh, he comes back trying to hit, like, hit and swing at me. He's just like, yeah, bro, um, you're so, uh, like, you're so skinny and all of this shit. I'm like, bro, at least I didn't have to go get liposuction. And post a picture of him get a light box section. And it's just like why why And then there was a picture of the lady boy, bro. Oh yeah. Yeah. So some guy some guy sent that to me. He's like, yeah, uh, you know that he's he's uh chilling with lady boys and stuff and I'm like Okay, that's weird. Is there any proof of that? He's like, Yeah, sends it to me. I'm like, Oh shit. And I posted that because he's like, yeah, bro, you know, uh, uh, I pull way better girls than you and all of this. I'm like, okay, see why you live in Thailand, bro. Like, you know, or whatever it was. And he's just like... Dude, that was crazy. The the ego of everyone is just so ridiculously high. Like, I'll, I'll never sit here and be like, yeah, my life is the best life. My life is the shit. And blah. Like, I, I live a good life. I'm comfortable, you know, comfortable. I'm grateful for everything. My girlfriend's the best best most beautiful woman i don't care what anyone says because it's not for them to decide i don't give a fuck about what all of these twitter geeks say it's know? beautiful i love that and i think that's that's an important message everyone really needs to hear man that we exactly what you just said my girl is the most beautiful woman in the world i don't care what nobody says because that's what's for me i, yeah. I think people need to understand that she's mine she ain't, she ain't for these fucking weirdos on twitter right, right. You guys can, can try. Some dudes have, have, from some of our old groups even try to fucking follow her. She shows me and I just fucking oust them. I don't give a shit. Like, it's just weird now. Everyone's just yeah. so weird now. And it's just like, where did where did any respect for anyone else go? It's like, Honor, too. With, um, like, basically everything Rolo says. I saw the other day, um, he was just like, yeah, uh, some dudes were saying some shit about his daughter and all of it. Like, guys, I don't care who you are. You don't bring someone else's wife, uh, children, whatever, into an argument. It's just some... Everyone is just... Everyone's so fucking angry. Everyone's weird. just so angry. It's so odd. It's just angry like... and thirsty for attention, bro. I think that's the main thing. Yeah. It's like a, a serious thirst like a genuine thirst like you know when you're out you've been walking you've been hiking all day or something and you forgot to bring a water bottle that feeling that's what it seems like to me it's like this thirst that they need to feel validated and there's no yeah. quenching it you might get a little bit and then it just continues on you know yeah, and it's, it's it's so it's sad because at, in the same fucking breath these guys will, will, will all say yeah but these these goals on instagram is that bro you sit here online as an anon begging for attention. Shut up. Like, <laughs> attention in itself, it, it destroys men too. You know, yep. like, I don't, honestly, God, I prefer to be doing my thing in the background. You know, I've got my businesses, I've got my business partners. That, that's all I care about. I could lose my, uh, my whole social again. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. It's like when I first got banned. I had so many people messaging me. Just like, Yo, bro, what are you going to do? I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to chill. I'm going to walk my dog. Going to live my life. Yeah. Yeah. Just carry on living. Like, work yeah. on my businesses. What the fuck? Like, people, people make the, the online world their reality. And I'll say this. 
you need to be happier offline than anyone ever thinks that you are online. Happier than you are Absolutely. offline. It's sad, man. It's sad. These people just want to show happy lives and this idea. Whatever, bruv. We all know that your yeah. life isn't 100% happy. We know that for the most part, you, you, you're just a miserable dude. Like, it's, it's cool. What, you, you've you always, you've never had any problems, and then you also want to sit there and be like, yeah, I'm a man. Every man has problems, constant, consistently. Like, it's just bullshit, the whole lot of it. It's cancer. And that's the, one of the things that I, I, I'm trying my best to, to change. Obviously, there's certain things that I don't talk about because uh, it's private. You know, right. and that's the other thing. People use their private fucking problems uh, and personal problems for for clout. It's just like you just, yeah, the soul no, their soul. It's sad, it, man. and it it does seem that way. And that's that's one one approach uh, that I'm trying. So like even doing this, right? Like I've been trying to be more active on socials and and trying to build things out because I genuinely enjoy you know the Photoshop and doing all that stuff and putting it out there. Yeah, um, cause I, I mean, I don't like, I don't watch TV. I don't watch anything. So it's like, this is a nice way to like, just get creative. And, uh, but again, like when I st first started doing it, right. Um, I was like, it's a lot of experimenting, but again, I, I found that in myself, again, we're all susceptible to it where it was like, it went from trying to do something to like, Oh, like trying to get attention without even me even admitting it to myself. And when I caught that, I had to take a real big step back and be like, let me see how I want to approach this. Cause I don't want to get caught in that trap. And one way for me was uh, being very honest. Like, yeah. you know, there's like now I'm doing these guest podcasts because I, you know, these are like you're someone that I genuinely have admiration for. And I like I, I feel like I'm learning a lot. So that's how I treat these conversations like, oh, I can have an interesting conversation with someone. I'm learning. I'm benefiting from learning. But also, you know, other people that might benefit from it, too, can watch it. Um, but before that I had some solo podcasts where I'm just talking about like just the realities of things. And yeah. it's like, you know, everyone wants to put like, Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so blessed and this all over online. It's like, no, bro. Like there, there's like, you have to struggle to get through life. Like if you're, if everything's perfect, there's like, that's not a real life. There's no way that's impossible. And it's weird. Cause you see this like a trickle down effect where it's like the people who are influencers or people who are you know, have large, huge followings. That's what they put out. And then it yeah. trickles down to like someone who has like 200 followers in Nebraska, but they're also doing the same thing. And it's like this weird melding, okay. you know, so and I want to bring something honest. And that's why I respect you. Cause I feel like you do the same thing. Like you bring something that's just very honest and genuine and, you know, and it's like, all right, if you like it, you like it. If not, whatever. It's see it's, for me, I love the irony as well because it's like these these guys who talk about fucking uh, the matrix, the gay tricks is what we call it. <laughs> but you know they'll sit there and they'll be like, "Yeah, bro, uh, you know the uh, the Jews, the Illuminati, you know whatever the, the secret fucking thing. This is your your big problem. You want to be worried about uh, how they're going to influence your mind." I'm like, okay, influence how how they influence the minds you're an influencer who actually people for whatever fucking reason listen to you and you're the one who's influencing their minds and you want to talk about the fucking like the the wef and all of this like you don't you don't know what what you're talking about it's like i have actual friends who go there and the, there's a very big difference between the WEF and the WEF agendists, right? They, like these assholes know nothing about nothing. They just sit online and talk about shit and just yeah. melt people's brains. <laughs> just for what? For what? This it's just so dumb. Yeah. The whole thing. The it's whole crazy. Thing. What, it's one funny. thing that it, no, it's hilarious. One thing that has brought me so much happiness and clarity of mind is admitting and being happy with the fact that I don't know shit, right? Like I genuinely, like I put myself in a position where it's like, there might be certain situations where I might know a little piece of information or two and I'm more than willing to share it. But for the most part, I come into almost every situation like I know nothing. What's 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 going on? You know, like, I don't know. And I, and I just try to keep my life as simple as possible. Whereas like, it seems like everyone, 
like you said, right, they want to talk about the Illuminati or the Jews or the, the, the World Economic Forum and these things like that. And it's like, bro, there's no way that any of us really understands how that really works. If anything, like life is complicated as an individual me and I'm nobody. I need to focus on that. That's where I'm putting my yeah. attention to. You know what I'm saying? Why would I give all that my attention? I can't change anything, but I could right. change, you know, my immediate environment reality or whatever. It's funny because if you look at the people that just post, um, it's like so many dudes just, they, they want to be the person that knows everything about everything. It's like when uh, Ukraine happened, right? Like, mm. you know, I got, you know, what? hundred and something odd people out of Ukraine. And I see people talking about politics and shit online. They don't know anything. And then the next thing happens, right? And then people know all of a sudden they're a lawyer. So like, you know nothing about law either. And then right. all of a sudden, uh, you know, that, what was that fucking thing called, man? The, uh, that film about child trafficking. Now everyone knows international tra child trafficking laws. It's like, you yeah. guys know nothing about nothing. And all of this this nonsense that you have in your brain that you've just learned, like or from a fucking Google search or, or a YouTube video, all of this shit is going to leave your brain very fast anyway. So you're not even going to remember it in like two months. It's like people yes. learn poisonous, dumbass things. Learn yeah. real shit, real skills. Like yes. Learn some carpentry, whatever. Right? Like, learn something cool. Stop sitting there just being like, oh, my life sucks because of the Jews. It's like, no, your life sucks because you're a degenerate loser that just fuck all with their life. Right. That's why and it's, it sucks. It's like uh, fast food of information. That's what it seems like. Yeah. It's just like people are consuming this shit and it makes them feel like they're getting things done. They're getting smarter, like it's productive. But like within not even a day, I'd say within a couple hours, like that shit just leaves your mind. And like, and then you're replacing it with something else and it does nothing for you. It does nothing for the world as a whole. It does nothing for your community. You know what I mean? And it's like, and you know what, one thing that's funny when I meet people who are very active in their own, in their own communities, right? Like, it doesn't matter what part of the world they're in, what city or whatever, but if they're very active, genuinely active, they're not sitting on social media, like no. at all. They're no. doing shit, dude. Doing stuff. Yeah. It's like, um, you know, it, it's the people that sit there online. They just, they have an idea about who they are. They have an idea about who pe who people want them to be. And then they just try and fulfill that. It's, it's, yeah. it's dumb, man. It's so dumb. And then you, you, like, you go and you actually talk to them and it's just, they're just hollow, man. They're hollow men. It's just, yeah. what is there about you? What's, what's nothing you just money cars and just some dumb idea that some influencers told you and you've just downloaded it into your brain thank like, you and up. that's exactly bro and and you know it's funny it's like i i say it all the time where and again i got caught in that little that little yeah. illusion of like oh i need to have a ferrari or a lamborghini or whatever and it's i mean i'm pretty sure it's cool to have and if i had this disposable income to get it i might get it just to have it but it's not something that it's like Oh, I need that for my quality of life to be at yeah. the peak. Uh, for me, genuinely, I've learned like, you know, I don't even like big houses or anything like that. I don't like, mm -hmm. I like, like right now I'm living in this nice little studio apartment that has everything I need. My grocery store is right there. I got a restaurant downstairs I can go to. Lovely people. I see them every day. That makes me happy. And it's like, mm -hmm. for me, I can sit here and enjoy that. And it's like, if someone like right now, you are highly successful, you live a, a very beautiful lifestyle and I can enjoy it for you where I'm like, dude, that's my boy, Michael. He's killing it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But then it allows me to appreciate my own thing too and appreciate exactly. what someone else has for them. It's like, you don't yeah. have to have what they tell you that you need to have. You got to be able to like, and I, and I'm going to tell this guys, it's genuinely a good time trying to figure out who you are and what you really like. Like I, ha I've having the time of my life figuring it out. And I think, you know, it's fun. It's fun. Because it's otherwise fun. you just go into random ass fucking directions because you don't right. have any destination. You don't know. You, you're like, okay, cool. Let me try this. Let me try this. Let me try this. Yeah. Most of the stuff you, you're going to realize real quick. Like, bro, I haven't been clubbing in uh, ages, man. And I don't ever want to go. Ever. I used to go just because I, I was like, right, stats thing, whatever. Yeah. Bro, 
I have always, for the entirety of my fucking life, I hate clubbing. I'm yeah, like, yeah. Me, me and the bros, we'll go to a, we'll go to a bar, we'll go to you know a pub, whatever. We'll sit down, we'll t- we'll chat. Like I don't want to be in some place which just smells like fucking piss, and yeah. next to some like raggedy chicks. Like no, pass, hard <laughs> pass. Like, I feel you. Uh, me and you, I, I'm not a club guy, but I like, like again, Hispanic descendant. So I like going out dancing. I dance salsa and stuff like that. I don't do bottle service, like unless it's like my brother's birthday, we'll do something special. But yeah, man, I it's. I'll say, you know, and just like how you're saying, like you start to learn things about yourself, and you went through your phase where you were going to clubs for status reasons, and now you're like, dude, I fucking hate it, Fuck and. That. And I will say, like, when you start to really put effort into, like, figuring out who you are, what you really like, what you really value, you'll surprise yourself. Like, yeah. it, and, it, and that's the fun part. Yeah. It's, you know, it's peaceful, too, man. Like, it's, it, as men, the one thing that we need after the war of work and, and you know, all of that, it's just the peace. Just the yeah. peace. If, if, and it's like these dickheads will sit there online and be like, oh, you can't play, uh, you can't play on the, on, games or on the playstation or xbox because that makes you gay what yeah, bro just chill out play some call of duty i don't get it. like bro weird. yeah what is, gay? is you judging what what another man fight like does and chills out to do thank like, you what's wrong with you that's what i and it's yeah. funny i actually made when i when i first started making content i made a short that said specifically that i was yeah. like you know I, it said something like dude if you like playing Fortnite and you enjoy, you know, collecting Pokemon cards for whatever reason, that's fine. That's cool. Just like, but you still got to do stuff. Like you can't just like waste your life away. Like, you know, try to go to the gym and do stuff and then be confident about the things that you like. Like, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm Fortnite pro or whatever. Like, you know, let it be your thing. It's cool, dude. It's like, just have fun. I'm so fucking serious about everything all the time. It's boring. Like, like like what we were saying before about those those guys who just want to sit down and talk business and just shut the fuck up. Man. Like, no. Let's just chill. Let's just chill. Have fun. I've had enough shit to deal with today. Right. right. Every single day. I finished my day. My piece for me, my dog, my girl. I got my yeah. bros. I, I can go and chill out with whatever. But every single day, her, my dog. Cool. I don't care. I don't, I, I, you know, whatever. Oh, yeah, bro, but you need to be... Do- I don't need to be doing nothing. What you need to do is stop judging other people and shut the fuck up and go start living your own life. Yeah. Porn brain. Porn and I, I, I think are. it's porn brain. And you know what I think what it is, too, is um, they're profiting off the back of people oh, yeah. needing, you know, not, not thinking for themselves. So they're profiting off the back of that. You know, which is, uh, again, brings me back to like why I'm kind of doing what I'm doing with this. And I'm pretty sure something with you where it's like, okay, you can profit off that. Cool. But I'd rather do it in a more in a way that's a little bit more moral. And it might take longer that way because you're not taking these little shortcuts and tricking and, you know, you're not doing all that bullshit. Um, But again, like I would feel better knowing that it's like, hey, I'm putting my honest self out there. I'm being real honest. Uh, and you know, and the people who, who gravitate towards it, they're getting something of value for it. That's the I, thing. I'll take that most, any day. Most people don't understand this. The, the more honest and real that you are, the less gangs and bullshit that you have to deal with because you don't have to, to keep on putting on a mask. It's like so many guys, I, and I get this one more, like, fucking, I don't know how many, too many times every single week. Someone asked me, yeah, bro, you know, this thing's happening with this really hot girl. Like, how can I keep her? Like, you don't keep her, bro. If she if she likes you, cool. See how things play out. You don't keep her, right? This is this is the problem. Too many guys, they're like, yeah, you know, how how can I get this? And, and how can I get that? How can I pretend to be different? Bro, just be you. And the people that want you, the real you, they will stick around. But the problem is so many guys are like, oh, yeah, well, you know, I've just had this divorce and, you know, my relationship's all fucked up. How was it in the beginning? Were you lying? Were you trying to impress her? Were you doing all of this shit? Well, yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. You weren't showing her your real self, were you? Because you were just trying your best. Bro, there's an old saying. There's a, where I'm from, there's an old saying that goes, how you get her is how you keep her. 
So if you yeah. got her, you pulled her out of pure charisma and she thought you were funny, that's all you're going to need for the rest of your relationship. But if you got her by, you know, spending money, doing all these things, pulling up in a Mercedes Benz or whatever, and like that's what she liked you for, you're going to have to keep that up to keep her. Yeah. How you get her is how you keep her. Exactly. Bang. Yeah. Bang. Oh. Shit, bro. Uh, we're, we're, we're approaching two hours. I, again, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me, brother. This means a lot. Uh, where can people find you? What do you got going on? Uh, you know, plug everything. Pathfinders, everything. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll plug it all, bro. No, so yeah. you can find me on, uh, on socials pretty much everywhere except for uh, Twitter because obviously the, the ban. Um, everywhere is just Michael J. Ringer, um, Instagram, uh, YouTube, which I need to start doing some YouTube stuff which I'm going to start this week. Um, Twitter is at redeemed ringer. And then what else we got? We've got pathfinders, man. If you guys want some real advice from someone who's not trying to be a cult leader, uh, who's actually, you know, done some, some very cool, successful shit. And not just me, my business partner, AG shout out to him. Uh, we both lead, uh, the group together, but that's pathfinders dot V I P. So hit over there. You guys can see some of the cool testimonials, some of the, the awesome stuff that we're doing, man, because changing a lot of guys' lives. And, uh, yeah, we, we want as many guys in there who aren't fucking degenerates as possible. And uh, the wall, they're welcome to send us any questions, whatever, by, by the DMs anyways. But we'll catch you guys, hopefully, inside. Hell yeah. Thanks, brother. I'll see you around. You got it, my guy. Appreciate you having me on, man. All right.